Hello, in this episode we are going to create a custom toolbit. It's something that I've seen a lot of people struggle with, especially on Windows machine. So I will show you how to create a custom toolbit and use it on a Windows machine. I will also show you which are the downsides of using custom toolbits, what are the limitations and how you can overcome some of them because not all the limitations can be overcome, but it can be a pretty useful thing to create your custom toolbits at least for previewing when using the cam simulator. So as you can see I have two files, one is called custom toolbit, here I will create the shape and the initial parameters of the toolbit, then we are going to the toolbit library editor, create a new tool, then we are going to go in the second file where we will use the custom toolbit that we just created, I will show you where to save each file and how to find it in order to be able to use it. So first let's create a new body, a new sketch and you'll have to remember that the order of the operations when creating a custom toolbit is very important. I will select the YZ plane and here I have to draw a projection from the side of my toolbit. In order to keep things simple I will create a bowl bit. Let's first roughly draw its shape then we will start adding constraints. Here I have to have a circle arc. Some of the constraints are by default. What is important is that you cannot create the full projection of the bit but rather half of it because we are going to revolve this drawing and if we create the whole projection FreeCAD won't be able to revolve it. So I will just draw a vertical line here and now the sketch is closed. I will also close this window and with the sketch selected I will go to this operation which is revolution. By default it has 360 degrees which is okay for me. I will click OK and now I have a rough shape of my toolbit. Of course I can anytime edit this sketch. I will give some vertical constraints and horizontal constraints to some of the lines. I will also try to make this round over a little bit more realistic. And now it kind of seems to look like what I am going to get in the end. But of course this toolbit hasn't any dimensions set yet. And to do that I will first select the body, go to the path workbench, go to the path menu, go to the bottom under the utils group and click on property bag. You can see here it appeared an item called attribute. I will double click it and it will open this property bag. So here I have to add the values for the shank diameter, the total height, the cutting edge height height, the cutting edge diameter, the radius of the corner and for that I click on the add button and I have to give the first property a name. I will start with the diameter which is the diameter of the cutting part of the tool bit not the shank and you have to remember that it always has to be called diameter if you call the variable diameter and use it for the shank it will break. The tool bit won't be usable and you will have to start all over again so diameter always designates the diameter of the cutting part of the bit. Moving to the group variable, you can see that even though I click the arrow, nothing is shown. There is no such group predefined, but this diameter has to reside in the shape group. I've tried it with different group names and it simply doesn't work. The type has to be a length, not a distance, but a length. And the tooltip, you can write whatever you want. Finally, there's a field where you can write whatever you want. Let's say the diameter of the cutting head. I have another checkbox here, create another. I I usually don't like to use this, I just click OK, it will close, I can click on add again, it's not a big deal, I will show you for the next variable what create another does. So the second constraint that I want to use is the shank diameter. I will keep the group shape and for the type also length. Here is the diameter of the shank. And now let's check this box, the create another. I will click OK and you can see it reopened the create property dialog. Actually it's really the same numbers of clicks. I don't know exactly why this checkbox is here but it doesn't matter. Now I also want to have a value for the cutting edge height. I will write here cutting edge height and what you really have to know is at the name field you cannot use spaces but you can use capital letters for each word and when using the tool it will actually separate with spaces each word. The group is the same, the shape, type also length, the tooltip is the height of the cutting part. 
I will uncheck create another because I don't like this approach. And there's one more variable that I need to use. It's the radius of the roundover in the corner of the toolbit. So I will just say radius, also the shape group. The type also has to be length, the radius of the bottom roundover. And I will click OK. I can also add some more fields here in another group. They really don't matter, but they can be very informative like a brand. Let's make a group details. It's a string type brand of the manufacturer and I can create many more like this but I don't think it's important so I will skip this part. In order to be able to add constraints to the sketch and since I don't want the sketch to break I have to add some values here. So let's say we have a cutting height of 20 millimeters, a radius of 2 millimeters, a shank diameter of 8 millimeters and the diameter it's the diameter of the cutting edge it's 25 millimeters let's say and now I can click OK and close this property bag. I'm going to the sketch now, double clicking it. For this line, which is the total height, I just remembered that I also have to add another value. It's the total length of the tool bit. The group will be shape. You can see that if I already defined a group for another variable, I can find it using the arrow. So the total length is going to be a length, of course, total length of the tool. I will click OK. Let's give it a total length of 45 millimeters and I will close the property back now. I can go to the sketch and I will start adding the constraints that I've just defined to this actual shape. So the total length, I will press I. Here I will press equal to enter a formula. I will start typing property bag. You can see it already filtered the results. And here is total length. I just press enter to close all the windows. You can see it constrained the total height of the tool bit, total length actually, to the value that we set in the property bag. For this line, I will set a length equal to the shank diameter divided by two because it's just half of the tool bit. I now click OK. And now let's set the most important part, the cutting edge part. From the Y axis to this line, actually to one point of the lines because I cannot set a distance between two lines, but to one point, I will set a constraint equal to the diameter value, which is the diameter of my tool bit, but divided by two, of course, because as I said, it's just half of the tool bit. Now you can see there are some weird shapes here. I'll just move this point over here and the center of the circle farther away. Now let's set the height of the cutting edge. I will select this point and press on I to set the distance from the origin, from the X axis actually. And I will just type property bag and cutting edge height. I will select this value and press enter to close all the windows. You can see that half of my sketch is already constrained. I just have to make the constraints for this part. And the most important part is the radius. I will just select the circle, the arc of circle, press the R value and then property bag radius and close everything. You can see actually it looks pretty weird because the center of the circle has to be horizontal with this point and vertical to this point. And now you can see the whole sketch is fully constrained. There's nothing that can move around here. Depending on the shape that you are drawing, you might have to use different constraints. Of course, this depends on the sketch workbench. I won't cover it now. So I will just close the sketch and now the revolution should look like my cutter bit. It looks a little bit weird. Let's go to the attributes and change a few values. Let's make the radius bigger, let's say a 5 millimeters radius and a smaller diameter of 20 millimeters. And let's also reduce the cutting edge height to 15 millimeters. This looks more similar to what I remember bowl bit looks like. This is the part about creating the shape of the custom tool bit. It's all that we have to do in this file about creating the shape. One thing to remember is in the sketch you always have to keep the tool with the cutting tip facing down the shank up so it will always face this way. And after creating this we have to save the file. First of all I will go to edit preferences, go to the document tab from the general group and make sure the save thumbnail into project file when saving the document is checked. But I prefer to uncheck the add program logo because it looks weird when selecting the tool bit. I will just click OK. This is an error because of one of the workbenches that I have installed, which doesn't have an icon. It's not something important. Now I will try to center the tool bit in the viewport. I will click on this corner and move it to the center. So when I save the file, this 
is centered in the thumbnail now i can hit ctrl s to save the file of course if you haven't already given it a name you'll have to give a name and now the most important part is moving this file to a certain location how can i find the location i will just close this file for now and here you can see that i saved the file in a custom toolbits folder it doesn't matter you can save it anywhere for now now moving back to freecad i will go to path and toolbit library editor so the first thing when I create a toolbit, I have to select a shape. As you can see, the custom toolbit file is nowhere to be found here. What I can do is select from the top the actual path, hit Ctrl C to copy the path. I will now hit cancel, move to a new window, a new explorer window, click on the address bar, hit Ctrl V to paste the path, hit enter, and I now I'm in the folder where FreeCAD holds the shape files. You could also use another folder, but it's more complicated because you have to run FreeCAD as administrator. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It will throw some file not found errors. So saving the shape file in the folder where FreeCAD saves the default shape files is the best idea. Now moving back to my file, the one that we've just created, I will have to rename it and instead of spaces, I have to use lines a minus using a space will also throw an error and now i will copy this file move back to the shape folder the folder where freecad saves the shapes and i will paste the file now i can go back to freecad and the toolbit library editor again and i will create a toolbit now here you can see the file that we've just created the custom toolbit i will select it as the shape of our toolbit now another dialog pops up to save the actual toolbit we will call it 20 millimeters bowl bit and press save now let's scroll down in the toolbit library editor we can see at the last position our toolbit when double clicking it you will see on the right the actual shape of the toolbit the values that we can modify the ones that you set in the shape file and the attributes where we can actually write a brand open source CNC let's say and this is the tool bit I can modify this value but since I called it 20 millimeters bowl bit I already have a 20 millimeters diameter let's just modify the cutting edge height let's make it 10 millimeters and I will press ok I will now close the tool bit library editor and let's start creating something with our tool bit now let's use our freshly created tool bit I've already created the body a pocket with a 5 millimeters round over on the bottom and on the sides and the line so I can create a slot operation with a new toolbit let's move to the path workbench select the body create a new job I won't be using a template now because I have to add another tool I will just decrease all these values to zero I will also set the output to grbl and on the tools tab I will click add you can see here a 20 millimeters bulb bit the one that I've just created double click it set vertical and horizontal speeds let's say 2000 millimeters per minute a spindle speed of 18,500 and remove the default tool now I can close the job and first of all I will select this line select the slot operation make sure the final depth is set at let's say 10 millimeters I will click apply you can see I have a slotting operation here and now I can go to the job go to the cam simulator and I will press play to see what our new tool bit will actually create I will now close the simulator, hide the body. You can see that it created a slot with a round over at the bottom of 5 millimeters, just as the shape of our toolbit is. I will delete the cut material for now, show the body again. And as you can see, here is a pocket with a 5 millimeters fillet on all the bottom faces and on the corners. Let's create a new 3D surface because the documentation says it's the only operation that for now supports custom tool bits. And I will click apply. Well, you can see here in the error panel, fail to map selected tool to an OCL tool type, surface error cancelling 3D surface error creating OCL cutter. I haven't found a solution to overcome this error so actually I won't be able to use this tool to actually create this kind of pocket, this kind of shape, this kind of face. The only use that I found for the custom tool bits for now is in the simulator where it can actually show you what it will create. Other than that you have to take into account and to adjust the standard path to actually get the shape that you want. So I will select the bottom of this pocket, click on a pocketing operation, I will click apply and choose offset. You can see that it created a very small offset because 
it only mills the bottom of this face. And now let's try selecting all these faces and click on the pocket shape again. You can see them on the base geometry, but the result is the same because you can see here pocket does not support shape, face, all the numbers of these faces that are not flat. Pocket only supports flat surfaces. So let's start again. I will select just the flat surface at the bottom, create a new pocket operation. And now let's go to the CAM simulator. I will first disable the slot operation so it won't take too much time. I will click on the CAM simulator button and now click play. And let's see what's the outcome of our pocketing operation. You can see that it's actually much smaller than our original pocket, than the one that we wanted to create. That's because the pocket actually is created only on this bottom face. So now how do I create this? Well, I actually have to go to the model which is kind of inconvenient. I will simply delete the fillet. And now you can see I have a simple square pocket. I will delete the pocket operation. And now I will select the bottom of the pocket. I will create a new pocket operation, offset 50% step over just as usual. I will click apply. And now you can see I have a pretty decent looking operation. Most probably the shape that the CNC will cut will look similar to what I initially had here. So I'll go to the job and start the simulator again. I will click on play and let's see the result. As you can see, it takes into account the diameter of the tool, but that's kind of all everything else you have to manually adjust to modify the shape and to kind of trick it into creating what you want to actually get. So this is how you create a new shape tool bit, how you create the actual tool bit, where you save the files on the Windows machine and how you can actually use it in a project, the limitations that it has and the hope that sometime soon we will be able to use the custom tool bits more or in the path or how it's recently changed its name the cam workbench thank you for watching and see you next time